Hey guys, as promised, we're back at the shelter to do some work on it and we're going to camp here for two nights. Buddy Mike's with me. You haven't seen him in quite some time. So yeah, we'll have some, some uh, good times, hang out by the fire, do a lot of building, eat some good food and have some good drinks. So stay along, I think you'll enjoy this one. So like I said, we're here for two nights. Uh, we have a definite plan of what we want to do. It's 2.30 now, so we don't have too much time before it gets actually dark. Uh, it gets dark around 5, but today is a very cloudy day already. So um, what we want to do is we want to make Mike a bench of his own. I got mine here. My, this is my bed, my bench. I want to make Mike a bench going from that tree to that tree or that basic area. Uh, and then we're going to do a back wall again. I don't know if we can get the back wall done today. But def probably, not, no. probably not, but definitely the bench and then put a tarp up for you uh, and then tomorrow night we'll work on getting, or tomorrow we'll work on getting the roof done and a back for Mike's wall if we can do all that, but um, definitely the bench and the roof. I think we should start that now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Mike's over there sawing, like you saw, he's going to get the big base pieces of wood that go on the ground that prop the bed up to give you some height. And I'm going to start cutting the actual bed, the logs that go on the bed. So here's a nice dead white pine. This thing should come down very quickly. I put a brand new saw, uh, sorry, a brand new saw blade on my saw. This is a dry, aggressive dry wood blade. So we'll see. This is the first cut on this new blade. Yeah, that's pretty decent. So this tree was laying on the ground. As you can see, it's kind of moldy. I thought it'd be a good tree, but it's super dense. <laughs> but it's a good workout. Yeah, it's a good tree. It's perfect, actually. It's crazy though how deceiving it is, man. Yeah. It looks rotted to it crap. Looks terrible. All right, get to work, son. So what are you doing? Tell me what you're doing right now. You're making them a certain length. Yeah. So I'm cutting them. They're about 18 inches long. So we need to prop it up. We have a rock in the one corner, and the other side there's nothing. So I'm probably gonna need two or three on the one side. And the other side, I'll just need the one. That way, we can get the bed slash bench off the ground a little bit. Nice and level. Yeah. Since Mike and I both have axes, we brought one um, boy's axe and one smaller axe. We have a 26 inch axe and a 19 inch axe. And we can both swap and use whichever axe we need to for whatever task we're using. All these twigs can be used as kindling and I would like to get a fire going relatively soon we have a big tomahawk steak to cook and she's solid frozen still frozen solid even uh, so I want to get a, a fire going and hang it high above to thaw it out just hanging meat Lots of dead pine for building and lots of dead oak for firewood. This place is awesome. And we got the planes overhead, so I feel like home. Too. Yeah, yeah, take these down. Yeah. Need to figure out what to do with that rock. Mm -hmm. So you're higher on that side already. Yeah. You don't really want to go any higher. You don't not gonna go any higher on this yeah. side. Uh, I think we should remove the rock. Let's remove yeah. And deal with the deal with the hole. <laughs> let's show the folks what we're working with here. <laughs> My hand or I got it. Oh, damn, I hate to have everyone big guys. Oh, 
my <laughs> shot! <laughs> okay, that's all right, Dad. It's not too bad. No, it's not bad at all. We can even... Just throw that one down. Yep. Okay, cool. There you go, now you got a nice depth there. You can put quite a few yeah. logs on there, get nice and comfortable. That's a good length too, I think. Should be so for the length of the bed, we know we need about four axe lengths. I'll go a little bit longer, mark it up. sure it fits and then we'll clean up all these extra little pokies that are on here not too many left all right it definitely fits you think that's long enough oh yeah I'd say that's eh? perfect okay we're gonna yeah we're gonna have to prop that you are propping that up now eh? yeah I'm gonna have to do it more still yeah she's low but perfect, okay, so that's the size we need for four axe lengths about. Trying to get these uh, limbs off flush so that Mike doesn't get no pokies in the middle of the night. We do have sleeping pads but also you don't want to break your sleep or poke through your sleeping pad, right? Right. When you're taking limbs off of trees, it's always good to go downward. Like if the limb is growing up like this, I'd prefer to take it off that way, the way it's growing as opposed to going against it. But a lot of the times they're small enough where it doesn't really matter on these little pines. Okay, one is done. We'll probably need, I got seven on my bed. I'm sure that's a good width for Mike too. Couple squat, Mike. See how she's, see how she's turning out. Test ride. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, nice height. Perfect height. A little bit of bounce. <laughs> Can't ask for much more. So a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen this place before. I did a video maybe three, four videos ago. I was here by myself building. I had to leave unexpectedly early, so I didn't get to finish building. Um, but that's what the pieces up above are, are for. We're gonna build a roof tomorrow. So I didn't get to tie one of the, the logs on before I left last time. And when we came here, the one end was on the ground. And I want to make sure we tie it up right now because it'll be by Mike's head or his feet, whichever. It'll be by him and I don't want to get freaking knocked out in the middle of the night. So we will uh, we'll cut a piece of paracord and tie it up. I only brought a certain amount of paracord and we need to conserve it. Mike brought some as well. So I'm going to cut my piece beforehand. So I don't have to tie the whole big orange piece of paracord on there and lose a bunch of it. So I know that the, the pieces of wood I'm going around are not too big and I only need to do one knot, which is the Canadian jam. So this is plenty. Maybe I'll just give myself a little bit extra. I, oh, I got my turley knife, my turley knife with me today, my convex knife. But I wanted to show you guys this. I got a sweet sheath in the mail. Let's put this on hold. So this is a sheath that fits my turley gasconade, which has an un conventional blade shape a big drop point it didn't come with a sheath and it's been hard for me to find a sheath that fits this um, like I was saying because of the Timber! the unconventional uh, bl drop blade anyways one tree leather a new leather maker a newer leather maker from British Columbia which is in Canada I know him and he messaged me asking if he, if I'd like any sheaths and I told him about this knife 
but I didn't want to send it to him. I didn't, I didn't want to send it through the mail and have the chance of it getting lost or whatever. He said, no problem, I'm pretty good at eyeing things out. So he did, and look at this. It fits perfectly. It has a removable dangler, or you can just wear it as a normal belt knife. I love the color of it. I'm super stoked on it. So thank you, Aaron, from One Tree Leather. If you guys are looking to get a sheath, don't want to send your knife away. He can make up sheaths that fit knives, man. <laughs> Obviously, I'm getting him to make one for my Mora Garberg right now because I love that knife. With the sheath on it, uh, I'd like a uh, black, I'd like a black leather sheath, and it didn't come with one. So he's gonna make me up a small, slimline black leather sheath for that bad boy. Okay, back to the paracord cutting. All that for that. I love this knife. I absolutely love this knife. Look how dirty this thing is. How well used she is. Oh man. How well used she is. How dirty. She's a dirty girl. Love my Turley. Aha, uh -huh. I can use your bed as a little uh, step ladder there, Mike. Multi purpose bench. So we're going to do a Canadian gym knot. Never heard me talk about this knot before. Tie a knot on the end. Wrap her around. Wrap seams around. Tie another knot right below it. Slide that paracord through. And wrench her down, bud. Just wrench her, bud. There we go. Tie a little stopper knot. But it's not even necessary. But bam, son. Is it? There. Oh. Better. We're just putting some heavy duty spikes in like I did on mine just to hold everything together. Oh buddy, hitting rocks. Well, well, I think she's done. Throw a tarp up on the back. Tarp. Tarp for pad. It's a pretty uh, decent sized tarp. Ten out of ten. Uh huh. Very nice size. Actually, I think it's technically three by three. But... I want to get this fire going. It's uh, it's still not four yet. Oh, it's almost four. Um, we've been working our butts off ever since we got here. We've got a lot of stuff done. Mike's bed's made. His tarps up. I got firewood. So we're gonna start this fire so that we can start to thaw with that steak because she is like a brick right now and would like to eat tonight. So I sparked this up using uh. A gasconade and a fire steel and some, some shavings we made out of pine. Now this gasconade is so old that the spine is kind of rounded. Yeah, my fire steel is full of, full of ridges which doesn't really help too much. There we go. smoked out tonight <laughs> like crazy <laughs> oh maybe not it's gonna swirl it's gonna swirl yeah. oh yeah the ground is soaked yeah. oh my goodness my knees. all right Mike tell the folks at home what we're, what we're up to here okay so our steak 
which is sitting over there, two and a half pounds, and it's literally a block of ice. Smart Mike and Joe. <laughs> we brought a frozen steak when it's freezing outside. It's like three pounds for real. So we're gonna run a ridge line from here across to the other pole, and we're gonna dangle a steak over our fire for a little while to try and slow roast or thaw it. <laughs> <laughs> so we can eat sometime before midnight. Womp <laughs> womp. I thought it was gonna thaw a lot quicker, but you know, it's like negative one, so I don't see how that's gonna really pan out too much. Ice box. This bad boy wouldn't even fit in a Ziploc freezer bag. <laughs> it's too big. A little bone tomahawk, Mike was saying. Okay, so yeah. As you can tell, pretty, pretty frozen. Can you take the paper off? Nah, I don't think so, not yet. Okay. Try and conserve it all in there. And... Can you hold that for a second? Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. You might have to pull it up a bit. Up a bit? Yeah. Lift the stage. Lift the stage. Food and tug. Okay. Let's go. We uh we gotta go get some water and we made up a little beer weir. So we're gonna go collect our beer and some water for the night because she's gonna get dark and we're kinda stuck here once that happens. So firewood. Firewood. Yeah, we got none other than this. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Lots of things to do. Camping in December. Camping in December. Just making our way out of the pine forest now. It's nice out here. A little bit brighter. <laughs> <laughs> but windier as well. We were pretty protected back in there, eh? Yep. It's a nice little valley. Yeah. It's supposed to be uh, 25, whoa, 25 kilometer an hour winds tomorrow. So. Here we are. Look at the ice. Look at that ice. That's crazy. She's getting cold, guys. Let's feel them. Oh, 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 oh. ice box, Joe. We got a, uh, what do we got? We got a Puzzled Huntsman Double IPA, and that is 8.5%. Uh, that's from Great Lakes Brewery and another one from the States, I believe. They Brewing and Malting Company Phillips. I think they, that's a, a uh, collab. And then Mike brought that and I brought these ones. These are Zodiac by a company called Omnipolo and 6.2%. This is also a collaboration, but a collaboration between a uh, brewery in Stockholm, Sweden and in Toronto. So I'm not really sure what, it only says India Pale Ale brewed by Omnipolo, Stockholm, Sweden, and Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Product of Canada. So I'm not really 100% sure on that, but very, very tasty beer, as is the Puzzled Huntsman. Oh man, poor cup of sweat going out there. What's that? Oh, I was just talking to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Problems. There we go. Bam, son. That's a decent piece that Mike just grabbed right there. I'm gonna try and split that one the conventional way. Standing up. Nice. She split, I swear. There we go.
Okay, what we're gonna do, because we are losing light quick now, is just uh, walk into things and potentially poke your eyeballs out. What about those safety glasses, eh, Joe? What about those safety glasses? Anyways, uh, we're gonna bring as much dead standing as we can back, oak, uh, back to the camp, and then we can just deal with it later there because we don't have enough time to be farting, farting about. I found a couple pieces. We actually, we actually put that one there on our last walk out. So I got that and then maybe that one. So what I'm gonna do is just throw it closer in the middle of the trail. That way I can't miss it. I'm going back because I want to try and get multiple pieces of wood. That's no good, that one. There we go. I'll have to find more and pile them here. This is another good piece I got. I'm gonna just try and bring these back. Oh, sweet, another one. Try and bring these back to the camp. There's that one behind me. Steak was not thawing out with the the rope method, so we made a lower tripod, uh, and we're going to set it on. We got two grills here. We set it right on there and uh, thaw it that way and smoke it quite a bit because she's smoking. Now I think it's probably a good time to take the the butcher paper off. You think so, Mike? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bad boy. They're trying to tell me how to cook it at the at the butcher where I got it, and they're like, oh, you pan sear it on either side, blah, blah, blah. I said, blasphemy. I got this. Bam, son. Can you guys see that? Can you see that? It is like a bone tomahawk. Look at that. That is a hunk of meat. It sure is. I really hope this thing thaws out so we can eat it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We won't be eating till about 8. Considering we won't be eating till about 8 o'clock, I think we're both going to have a snack now. I'm going to have some meat stick and cheese. Maybe crack a beer. You want to crack a You want to split a beer? Yes, sir. Oh, snap. It's a little smoky. Getting settled in here. The fire is deciding it wants to be warm now and work for us and thaw our steak out. So that's a nice, nice feeling. I'm getting pretty comfy in here. As soon as we hung up, got, got, uh, Mike's bed made and hung up that tarp, it felt very comfortable, very homely. I'm using this weird pillow thing to light up while I'm filming. Hopefully it works good. Yeah, we uh, we split a beer. We opened up one of those Zodiac beers and they're very tasty. So I'm almost done this one. The titanium cup is keeping it at below freezing temperatures, which it would be ice. That's not accurate. Pretty cold though. Ugh. Yeah. Let's check on that steak. Check on that steak, bro. Oh yeah, buddy. Look, she bled on me. She bled on me. But it's uh oh yeah, it's getting soft. The part down by the by the bone is already starting to cook. It's completely thawed. So yeah, it'll be good. I, I feel like it'll still be another few hours, but Think I should put the steak slice on now before it gets too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna put the steak slice on now before it gets too. I thought it was cake slice. Yeah. <laughs> Shuddy. <laughs> I had a commenter, a subscriber comment, on one of my videos saying, "Really appreciate all the little things you film, such as, and he used putting steak slice on the steak, for example. He said it makes you feel like you're there with, with us." 
So I like that. That's what I'm going for. I would love all my videos to have that feel. So we're going to show, uh, put a little cake spice on that snake, bro. Come and camp with us, right here with us. Oh man, I'm getting smoked out so bad. <sighs> Mike, you cold? No, I'm good. It's nice and comfy, eh? Yeah. No wind. That's the key. That's the key. Alright, put a little bit extra on there just in case she falls off. I like the I like the keg spice. You afraid of a little keg spice, Mike? No. <laughs> I need some spice in my life. <laughs> keg spice in my life. <laughs> This is beer. You can't see it. There we go. This is beer in a box. Fancy, fancy beer. I've never had this kind before. You've had Fuller's in general? Just Fuller's London Pride. Fuller's London Pride. This is called Fuller's Vintage Ale, Vintage, bottled 2017. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Limited edition, 8.5% and it's a 500 mil. So let's try this bad boy out. It was like Oh, 12 bucks or something for this, but I figured like man, how often do you see these? It's a limited edition. It, it's you know, it's It's vintage ale from 2017 guys. You, you don't see that every day. This is nice and cold. Yeah. Very cold um, Okay, so let's open it up bottle conditioned you Can read about it after But I can also show you guys something cool. You probably already know you guys aren't a bunch of dummies This is a not twist off, this is a pop off. I don't have a bottle opener obviously, but I have my knife. So what I'm gonna do is prop my knife against my thumb. And pry. It's not our type of IPA, I can tell you that by smelling it. it smells a little bit more on the malty side, but there is a almost hint of oranges underneath. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Let's try this bad boy out. Where's your cup? Ooh, she dark. It's vintage. It's vintage, exactly. <laughs> it's a fine 2017. <laughs> she dark. All right, Mikel. Cheers, her bud. It's a little head, a little foamy. There's nothing wrong with that beer. No. That's pretty decent. It's flavor country. <laughs> it sure is. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot, man. That's pretty. I can decent. tell this is a 2017. <laughs> Completely different than yeah. the 15 taste. This guy. You guys want to hear what it says? I wish you could answer me. I wish I could hear the answers. Cause if you said no, I wouldn't read it. But I'm just gonna assume you say yes because I can't. I can't hear you guys. You know. So I'm gonna read it. Vintage ale is a truly distinguished bottle conditioned beer. Holy crap! There's a holy thing, my Bob. See that thing, my Bob? I'm not gonna read it. I won't. I won't bore you. I won't bore you. Mike, let's let's read this without them. Oh, look at the, <laughs> look at the softness. We've been waiting. Oh, dude, it's the frosted pulley. Nice. Okay. The color is so nice. After um, yeah, it's fully thawed now. In a little while, I'm gonna drop it down, get it seared with some flames, burn up some fat, tons of fat over here. I cannot wait to eat this bad boy, dude. Oh my goodness. I'm licking my fingers. Look at my fingers. Okay, we're calling her done. So we're gonna take her off, let her sit for a full five minutes, let it rest. But look at the color on that, man. Nice and red. 
cannot wait to dive into this. Fancy as fudge. Oh yeah, you gotta love that blood on my blood <laughs> on my uh, <laughs> tar on my blanket. Blanket blood. Damn son, look at that. That's so delicious. Oh, the the fat is congealing on the top. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's probably cooling down. Yeah, it's cooling yeah, down. Very... Yeah, I'm gonna take a big old honking bite of this thing. Mmm. Eat it like a burger. Oh my god. <laughs> It's all right, eh? Okay, it's really difficult to eat and film and light everything up and stuff. So, you bet your butt, we're gonna clean these plates off. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You pour me a beer? Yeah, pour that. Oh! Yuza, cheers. Dang. What a tasty beer. What a tasty steak. Some coyotes out there. You guys hear those coyotes? Can you hear that, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds close. Mike, I'm scared, man. <laughs> well, that was cool. I don't think I've heard coyotes here before in this in this spot. Well, we've been just sitting here. It's 9.30 now. Um, I'm full. I'm getting tired. Yeah. We probably drank six beers between the two of us. Yeah. I Something think so. like that. Not too much. All very tasty. This fire is very warm. It's radiating like crazy. But before, my feet were really cold. And uh, my whole body is just super warm now. I feel very dry. Probably gonna turn in pretty soon. We're gonna get up tomorrow. We got bacon, frozen bacon, <laughs> to try to cook. Maybe we'll put the tripod back over here. Uh, we got pancakes. We got hot chocolate. We sit around, have a nice morning, and then we're going to after we've uh, warmed up and had a fire and, and ate and got all full, we're gonna start building the the, the roof. So that should be good. We're gonna raise the roof. We're gonna raise it up. Gonna raise that roof, but uh, yeah, like I said before, after ever since Mike hung that tarp, it's been really comfortable, really cozy looking. I really don't know if we're gonna get his back wall done tomorrow. Yeah, it's certainly not a necessary. It's definitely not, not a priority. It's not a priority or necessary, no. No, maybe next time. I can hear that plane though. <laughs> <laughs> Without fail, eh? Yeah, every time. <laughs> but. Uh, we've got some spikes after we didn't show this, but we got some big stakes in the front there, uh, just to kind of hold everything in on Mike's bed too. So like we're saying, like we can we can put a wall on that next time. We'll put a roof on. I'm sure we'll have some some more time after the roof tomorrow. And maybe what I was thinking was we can fill in that corner there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind of on the side. Yeah. Exactly. Wrap it around so that we're kind of even maybe just lay some logs and not thatch it. Right. Just get them ready or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Structure. Yep. So, like we were, we were both saying, man, earlier, like how great this area is. There's everything there. We got a t all that firewood. We still have a bunch of firewood left. Crazy heat radiating. We're about to go to bed. This is the best firewood ever. Right? Thick oak, thick dense, and easy to gather. Yeah. Like we gathered it all within a hundred yard uh, diameter of this this camp. Between the two of us, in what, 15 minutes tops? Yeah. Like we had a ton of wood, man. Luxury. And I've been here a few times and done the same in cold weather and, and, and relied on wood. And even building the bed, everything was right around here, too. So, 
Very happy to have this spot. Very happy to be here. This, this is a cool kind of camping. This is probably my favorite kind of cool weather camping. You know what I mean? A little bushcrafty, a little man-made materials. Just kind of hanging out, doing what you want. I'm glad to have Mike with me, man. When it gets when it gets dark, like in these cold months, and you're staying here for two nights, it gets so boring after five o'clock. There's not much I can do. I mean, sitting here, uh, putting wood on the fire and yeah. conserving beers, <laughs> you know? ration, <laughs> rationing beers. Anyways, we're gonna go to bed. Oh, I'll get with you guys in the morning. With you guys in the morning. Good night. Why did I salute it like I was a like a earlier I gave a you get a prince oh snap Major Tom over here ground control <laughs> derp I was trying to think of other lyrics but it didn't come to me in time ground control Major Tom. Something, something. Air uh, floating in the, the most peculiar way. <laughs> Good night. Yo. <laughs> How you doing, big guy? Good sleep. Yeah. A lot of coyotes, jeez. Dude, at that one point in the middle of the night. Oh my goodness. Going to town. Yeah, I, uh, it's eight o'clock, it's past eight o'clock. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I've been up for quite some time. I got up and got completely dressed, took a nice old pee, and then I was really cold, so I, with all my clothes on, crawled back into my sleeping bag, <laughs> just to warm up. There you go. Yeah, I had a good night's sleep, too. It was, uh, probably pushing it for the sleeping bag. It's a negative seven bag, but... It's not true anymore. It's it's been a few years old and lost a lot of down and stuff. So, I did bring a wool blanket with me. I kind of draped that over half over me uh, during the night, and that helped a little bit. It didn't compress my down too much, which I was concerned about. But everything's fine. Ah, like I said, it's past eight, so I'm gonna get up and start this fire and uh, start thawing out some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> This is how all Canadians are born. <laughs> this bed's pretty awesome, man. I got my gloves hanging up where I need them. My headlamp just ready to go. In case I need a GoPro during the night. I got a sit pad here, which I stand up on and then pee that way. So I don't have to put my boots on or anything. My boots underneath my bed. I really like this camp. It's starting to be pretty comfortable. starting to be pretty familiar. This is my third time camping here. Fourth time being here. Oh yeah, those boots are ice balls. Buckets of ice. Almost fully clothed again. I do have reserves. I have long johns, extra socks, and an extra undershirt with a hood. I haven't had to break those out yet, and I, I'm going to try not to. If I have to do that tonight, it's supposed to be colder tonight. If I do that tonight, I will. A little gunslinger belt. Look at my belt. Look at this sweet belt. Some might think it's corny, but I like it. Pretty fancy. I feel like a gunslinger. I already said that, didn't I? This cooking tripod has proven to be pretty handy. <laughs> We're going to thaw out our bacon on there, cook it probably up there too, that way we won't burn it, cook it nice and slow. There you go, no, oh, oh. <laughs> there we go, cool. So we put our bacon over in the sunlight for a couple minutes trying to, trying to, you know, thaw it out, but she's not as frozen as the steak was, so that's a bonus. Now the bacon doesn't really want to come apart. So we kind of just got to put it up there until it thaws a bit. It's a, it's a hunk of bacon you brought there, Mike. Bacon's cooking. Fire's warming us up. Feeling a little bit warmer. The, the, the sky has gone to complete gray. Um, there was some blue, and we had some hope. But 
Oh, there's a there's a flurry. There's a flurry. There's another flurry. We're gonna get some snow. I'm totally fine with snow. Rain, I could I could do without. We've been patiently waiting over this fire. This cooking tripod is turning out to be just awesome. Uh, we're gonna cook some sausages later up tonight, and they're frozen, so I'm sure we're gonna have to use this as well. Have to trim it down so that it fits underneath the roof. But let's uh, let's grab a piece of bacon there, Michael. Cheers, everybody. Cling. So good. Oh, buddy, smoke is killing my eyes. You got me too, but wow. Who needs to see when you can taste? Right. Sight is a. I don't know what to say. That's really good. Really this might good. be some of the best fire bacon I've ever had, to be honest. Man, it's smoky. It's smoky not only from like being over the fire, but I believe it's probably smoked bacon already. It tastes yeah. quite smoky. Oh, buddy. That's all right. We still got a bacon log. <laughs> Maybe we can wrap our sausages in the bacon later. Pork wrapped pork, bro. <laughs> Bacon salad for our sausages. Mmm. Hot. I've been wiping the bacon grease on my gloves. Just so that we can attract as many predators as possible. And we hang them right here. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some work to do, especially because we need a roof. There's things falling from the, the sky, so. We need this bacon. Get out working. Get out working. That makes sense, right? Yep. yep. We're gonna start on our roof. Uh, the plan is to measure just past where the fire goes, not even not even to the fire reflector, just like middle of the fire up here. And I'm gonna tie two logs or one big one going from this pole over to that pole this way. Okay? And then we're going to line lo logs on the roof with the thick ends on this side going back towards the back of the, ch of the shelter so that it's kind of like angled like this. So all of the rain or snow or whatever is going to go down and b off the back of the shelter. Um, the reason for putting the stop log, like the, the end log, just right mid-fire is because I don't want the smoke to come all up and billow up and like kind of circle inside the shelter and just smoke us out. So if, I feel like if we put it only halfway past the fire, it has a draft to go up, and it almost might even pull it, like you're saying, right? Eh? Yeah. Hopefully. Like like a chimney effect. So that's what we're gonna do. And seeing as how it's only halfway, the, the the pieces only need to be about five feet long each. So that means we can double up on trees, like cut one tree down and use it twice, or maybe even three times. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a bunch, man. Those are some decent ones. We'll be only like four out of this one. Yeah. Like that might be it. That might be it. Plus there's some other ones. Right, we got two over there. Well, we ended up venturing a little farther than we had thought uh, we were going to need to to get the wood. 
So Mike's gone back to get the axes so we can clear up all the limbs and stuff off the uh, off the pieces of pine we just felled. We had two big ones there and two over here. I believe that's going to be enough for the full roof because um, those ones, I'll show you, they're big, very big. Look at this area. Look at the ground. It's like moss, pine needles, and oak leaves. It's very, very nice. Very nice back here. All right, check out these bad boys. Those two. I think that's even thicker than most of the other ones we have at the base. It goes up there on the ground there. I see Mr. Michael coming. Mikhail. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> some Ric Flair. Okay, so we're just measuring now um, the length of the log we need to put up there. Is that just barely on just there? Just barely. Okay, another foot. So another foot on top of that? Yeah. Okay, so we'll take our measuring stick. You got it? Yeah. We'll go over to our big logs. We're going to use um, the butt end, like the, the, the fat end, so that we have a higher up. We can get more of a pitch pointing down. There you go. Decent? Perfect. Nice. There's even an arch in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Get the old measuring stick, Mike, and we'll get the, the lengthways ones now, please and thank you. And we want overhang, right? We want definite overhang, not on the front, but on the back. So, right here. let's see. Yeah, that's a good overhang there, and then, yeah, just keep your hand there, and we'll, we'll cut that there. Perfect. So, so we'll just mark the, uh, the actual marking stick now and we can just use that as a guide. I will, I'll just run down this one and mark it. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Get one more. Hell yeah. So we already used that one, two, three times, that one piece of wood. And then the end can be used as firewood or whatever. Odds and ends. Bits and bite. This is the mark here, right Mike? That's fair shit. Yeah. Some decent solid pine too. pieces on. I'm going to tie this bad boy in place so we got no kind of wobble. We got a little wobble there. I lost our arch too. <laughs> Inverted arch. So again we're going to put the thicker pieces at this end. Oh look at the pitch Mike. Yeah, Heck perfect. yeah. That is perfect. Anyways yeah big thick piece here. Thicker pieces this way. Everything small running this way. Rain, snow, all the shed running that way. The, the back is thatched really well. I'm not worried about it dripping into that. I can always thatch it more. And I can own, honestly, whenever I'm coming here and worried about it, I can line this with a space blanket and be totally good. She's smoky.
Uh, is she getting close or what? No, I'm not touching. And you're t way taller than I am. Well, not way. But... Wow. <laughs> a head taller than I am. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's looking cool. A little smoky. No, I just got something in my eye. Mike, you're supposed to be wearing <laughs> safety glasses. <laughs> All right, just taking a small break from building the roof. We want to make up some wintergreen tea. There's lots of wintergreen plants around. I'll go around and show you when I pick it. When I pick it. Um, but while we're working, instead of putting the billy can right in the coals and having a chance to tip over or whatever, we don't need to do it any very quick either because we're working so I've got this piece of maple I'm gonna stick it in between the fire reflector I've got another piece of heavy dense oak I got off the ground I thought it was gonna be nice and soaking wet but it turns out it's like prime oak but anyways that's gonna hold that in place the the, the stick's not gonna go anywhere even if that's full of water um, and then if it does I can prop, prop the stick down in the back, but she's all good I will carve a little notch right there, but it's not necessary right now So let me get some water on there. We got the water on Waiting for a boil. There we go. Don't have to walk far at all You can see how easy it is to find and obviously where it gets its name from it's green in the winter time when not many other things are if you're not 100% sure on what this is break her up And you cannot mistake the smell of that winter green um, <clears throat> grows in clumps of I don't know four or five sometimes it has a red berry on it a red berry you can eat but we'll just grab some from here and I'll go grab some from a different spot so I don't really just like wipe out this this area completely winter green oh winter green there we go And that makes for a really nice tea. Mike and I are going to have some. I guess we should put that support on. There. Yeah, we gotta put that support up for sure. So we, we were just both both talking about how we're kind of sketched out by the the load weight on there. So we're gonna put a, a support stick on top of that one. This isn't boiled yet, so we're gonna do that right now. Let's get a thick, like a decent sized pine. So we figure it will cut it, leave it a little long, and then that way we'll have to really prop it up. Like put it this under there, prop it up, kind of put it into the ground a bit. And then that way too, later on, if we feel like it, we can kind of close off this area. And this this can kind of be like our door. Uh, even if, um, I don't know if it's in frame, but there's a, a, a half wall here. We could put that wall all the way to the top and have sure. a legit door. I'll cover from wind by three sides. Pretty cool. That's what I was talking about, the wall there, and just build it all the way up. There you go. So we cut it too short. You can always do another one. It probably needs to be a longer, right? Probably. Okay, so we'll use this as a marker and add like two inches to it. Okay, so let's dig into the ground a bit. Yeah. We're just digging down in into the ground a bit so that um, the post that we're going to cut to fit has somewhere to rest. Not too deep, just a little bit. Okay, so then that's up there like that, pretty secure. This side has popped up a bit, but we're going to take it and tie, it, pull it down, and tie it with paracord. It's all going to be very secure. Yeah, nice, nice. And we made ourselves a little a little coaster. A little coaster for the beers. <laughs> Fire disc. It should cut too later and just take a picture of the beer 
cut through those later okay. and take a picture with beer sitting on the Definitely. Coat. Instagram picture. I'm just going to clear up all the pokies and all the bark off of here. Make it look a little bit nicer. We'll save our eyeballs. We'll save our puffy jackets. And all will be well. I kind of like the way it looks with the bark stripped off it. in first, I guess. Let that steep for a few minutes and be good to go. Just so we save the stick and because it's easy enough, well, we're not using this, I'm just going to pull it right back out. Drop it onto the ground so nobody's tripping over it or anything. And then it's right there to use when we need it for next time. Oh, we came across in the woods. The old knife rock. We got a... What's the top one, Mike? Deering Cruiser. Deering Cruiser. We got a Deering Woodchuck. We got a Turley Gasconade. And we got a... I don't know the name of that one, Mike. Puko from Finland. Puko from Finland. Sahonky? Yeah. Sahonky? Yeah, a few bucks right there. A few bucks. Well, it's lunchtime. I brought some lunch meat and some jalapeno Havarti cheese, which is going to go good, I'm sure. And some mustard. I got some mustard packets from Wendy's. Shout out to Wendy's. Uh, if you've been a long time subscriber, you, subscriber, you'll understand why that's funny. Here you go, Michael. Thanks, You're welcome. It's a little icy. Oh, I see. I think I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna crack a beer with lunch too. Yes. All right. Have a beer with lunch time, then get back to work. Yeah, I, that, this stuff's so good. It's really good. I'm in love with Havarti. No, uh, no, uh, no. Anyone? Anyone? I'll stop now. Oh yeah, look at that. That must have bought. El Guapo. Some of this pine is so solid, eh? I know. It seasoned very well. Well, lunch was good. Just finishing up a Karma Citra. I get back to work pretty soon because I'm chilling down sitting here. That wind's whipping through here. Yeah, I'm cold again. Yeah. We got about a third of the roof done, so we'll take maybe another, uh, I don't know, a few, few trees, maybe five trees. Again, we're only using dead. We have a plethora of dead wood around here. So a plethora of dead pine, which is very easy to work with, which is good. And I, I like to say the word plethora, so I'll just keep saying that. Plethora of beer left, too. Plethora. Damn, son. Sorry about that. You know how I know you're not a peasant? How's that? Coaster beer. <laughs> a wooden coaster beer. We've been working like crazy, doing some more renovations, some of which I didn't get on video. We got a nice piece of oak as a brace for Michael's side. And then we were able to take out his um, 
the stake that was holding in the other stake like that exactly so that's in there very very uh solid it's holding that up we've got pretty much the roof done we got to get a couple more pieces over there but then we're done uh we also built up the fire reflector quite a bit that that top piece of wood on the fire reflector is a decent size and then we were able to do a canadian jam knot tie these bad boys in together and now that's sitting properly everything is coming together pretty good it's starting to snow a bit but just small flakes we're hoping it stays as snow and doesn't switch over to rain Got an Omni Polo Zodiac going on right here. Almost done that. And I think we'll go grab some more wood for the for the roof, eh? Yep. Get it done. Get it done. Get the roof One and done. We've kept the fire going all day, which is pretty cool. It has like a nice homely feel to it. Uh, we're not throwing too much on. Sometimes it's like uh, old pine cutoff ends, and sometimes it's actual firewood, it's actual oak that we've got. Um, as we've been building, we've been collecting wood all day, and I think this is the better way to do it. Look at all that. That's all super dense. That's more than enough for tonight. We don't have to collect any more. Uh, we just have to saw it up, obviously. I'm really happy I switched out blades before I came. I got the new blade in the mail the day I left, and this is that dry, dry wood blade on it, so it ha doesn't have the same teeth as the blade I had on it before. The blade I had on it before was an all-purpose blade. This is an aggressive dry wood blade. So cutting green wood isn't good with it, it binds, but I haven't cut any green wood, so it's been fine. But like this is solid, solid, solid oak. And she just tears through it, like. Very impressed with the blade. For you guys who don't know, this is an Agua 21 or Agua Canyon Boreal 21 saw. Yeah, one or two maybe. Bam, son. Come look at it from this angle. Pretty tight. Pretty tight, bro. Yeah. yeah. That looks great. All right, this is the last real piece. There's still going to have to be some adjustments, some um, patchwork, putting some duff on there, but the last real log up there. There she goes. All right, buddy. Pretty decent. You can walk the whole way. More or less. Right there, you get a little hung up, but that's not so bad, eh? Yep. Uh, not ducking at all. So we're done with the roof for this trip. What I really want to do, I don't want to put duff like debris off the ground leaves sticks pine duff up there because it's really not going to do much um what it will do is create a fire hazard rain stuff down and not be that waterproof if i'm being honest so what i do want to do is get bark i want to get either birch bark or thick go ahead mike it's all good just trying not to saw <laughs> so he doesn't make noise uh either birch bark or or some white thick white pine bark or something like that to line up on there but like I said, for this trip, it's okay. It's not going to rain. It is snowing now. It's not going to get any warmer. Uh, there's frozen puddles in the woods here. So what we are going to do, what we are going to spend our time doing, it's 3.30 now. We don't have too much more time. But considering we have all of our wood already and everything, I've been wanting to make this wall a lot taller for the past couple trips. So that's what we're going to focus on. We need to put a bigger stake in because right now this stake here is nowhere near tall enough to make the wall stand sturdy. Okay, so this is gonna be our stake. We're gonna raise it up to about here, just above. We want the wall to come right to this top piece. So we're gonna cut it maybe about up here so we can drive it a couple inches to the ground and then we can fill up in between. Nice.
Okay, well, that's about as much as she's going in. That's in, we can tie it once we tie it, it'll be decent. Okay, cool. Um, let's get this one in there. Need to cut this off, I'm sure, a bit. So this is the, oh yeah, we gotta move those out too, right? Yeah, yeah. Right there? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I gotta pound that in a bit, but that's not so bad. Does it feel solid? Oh yeah. Can we tie it in, yeah? Yeah. Okay. One. And like a bar. Oh, I wonder if I can get it down past the roof. You don't have to cut it. That's it. Yeah, we got it. Ah. You push those for uh, towards me, back towards me. Line them up, kind of thing. All right, cool. Sweet. That was easier than I thought. That wasn't so bad at all. will be a tight fit. Well, at least it's not gonna come out. <laughs> Holy. We might need to put a smaller one in there, actually. We'll have to put another one out here, I think. Tie another one, like a tall one. Yeah, but still, that'll be fine. All right, guys. Pretty happy with our progress. I think we're done for today. We're losing light. It's four o'clock, so the sun will be done in an hour. The little little sun there is, but we got to spend our time cutting up our firewood now. And getting ready for supper. Check this out inside here. Doesn't that look cool? Nice and homely. Completely closed in. Obviously there's gaps everywhere, but it does retain heat. I can feel being warmer in here than out there. Absolutely. Very pleased with our progress. We're gonna get that tripod in here too and see uh, see how the fit is, but very cozy. So you can see in there, I got a lot of coverage, and I'm not really uh, exposed to anything. But Mike over here, um, the wind's coming in this way, and his feet are pretty exposed to the elements. So we're gonna throw up this mess tarp. I have a five by seven mess, Bushcraft USA 
bushcraft outfitters mast tarp and we're going to wrap it around the trees and make like a little um, wall a little end wall for them you dropping bombs over here <laughs> <laughs> not yet <laughs> all right so we should put it lengthways right yeah So our plan is, there's a tree on that side. Can you see it? Where, Mike? Yep, you can. He's gonna tie it off to there. I'm gonna wrap it, and then tie it off to this tree so he gets this whole big covered spot. I already went around and cleaned off this pine uh, of all the pokies, because obviously I don't wanna poke a hole in my, my tarp. We got more, more coverage where it needs to be. Same idea, but look at that. Instead of being all down there, Mike's got, what, half your bed cover, basically. Yep. So, maybe straight in there. Pretty comfortable. Yeah. Very nice. Mike, Mike, it's snowing a bit there. It's yeah, it's coming down. He's coming down. Wind's coming out. Look at that beautiful shelter. Wow, that's awesome looking. To grab the tripod, put it under there, see how much room we have, and see if it fits. We keep it like this. We're not even really losing any room. Uh, they're so the, the the sticks are so close to like the legs of the tripod are so close to the fire. See what I mean? We're really not losing anything. No. And it fits perfectly. Nice. Ballin'. It's so much brighter in the camera. Oh my. You see what I mean here? How close they are. It's not impeding any kind of water. How's their eyes, Mike? They're all smoky. <laughs> I'll be alright. Uh, anyways, yeah. Nice. It all fits perfectly. And the back can even get dropped down more or raised up more to adjust height. I've been trying to show you the accumulation of snow. It's not much, but it's hard to show, but on this green tarp, you can really see it. So it's coming down more than it has the whole time right now. I'm hoping we get dumped on, really. Hope we get a freaking couple inches of snow. Well, Mike, cheers her to a, a good day of hard work. Good day. Wow. We got some sausages. We got some green beans. We got some more beers. It's 5.30 now. <laughs> so early. <laughs> so early. Lots of snow out there, but we're just noticing the awesome glow off the fire in here, and I had to get it on video. It's just very uh, ambient. Ambient. Mm -hmm. You guys like this video? You like this type of video? I feel like we've been going, 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 just doing stuff the whole time. So the whole time I, there was light, light out. That's right, yes. So I hope that there's lots of good content uh, in the footage, and I hope it's not just me rambling on like I normally do. Well, well <laughs> what are you going to do? There's, there's some rambling. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice in here. It's nice and warm. It's very cold out there, very windy, snowy, and in here it's, uh, it's cozy. It's honestly, yeah. it's comfortable.
All right, we got our snossages. I don't know if you can see that. My light's dying. But uh, we got our grill up, our grills up on the cooking tripod. What kind are these, Mike? Honey garlic? garlic. Honey garlic sausages from the old butcher. So they should be pretty tasty. I got some mustard and cheese to go on them as well. So I'm excited for that. They're not too frozen, but we're going to slow cook them up there. I'm not really too hungry right now. We've been munching. So slow cook them up there. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Proudly bring you our yearly experiment into merging an assembly of amazing flavors and aromas, our Nickelbrook 2016 Cuvée. Our 2016 Cuvée is a complex mixture of sweet malts, fruits, herbs, and spices. We added a mix of bacteria for tartness and bretonomyces for a bit of funk. Bretonomyces! <laughs> Enjoy it today or lay it down in your cellar and savor the changes in character as it matures. Well, we enjoyed it today. <laughs> what do you think about it, Joe? I love it. It tastes bourbony as F. There's ingredients here. So it has um, dried figs, orange peel, raisins, cinnamon, allspice, black pepper, cardamom, and vanilla beans. Cardamom? Cardamom. You say cardamom? Yeah. Cardamom. I don't know what that is. It's a spice, I assume. <laughs> no, it's super good. It's nothing like what I normally like, but that's delicious. No, it is. Yeah, boy. Nickelbrook QA 2016. Reserve. Second night of reserve. Oh, we are not peasants up in this piece. Non-peasant bushcraft. Okay, boys and girls. The piece de resistance. What kind are they, Mike? Did you try it yet? Are they honey garlic? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Random sauce no sausages with cheese. And I have some mustard. i got to find that moutard right quick because that's going to go phenomenally with the sausage. Try these bad boys out. I'm happy. Yeah? They're hot though. <laughs> They're warm. They're not joking. Oh my goodness. Temperature warm. Woo! They cook perfectly though. Mm -hmm. They're still juicy. Yeah, that tripod, man. It's the way to do it. Mmm. So good. You got that cheese on there, that mustard. Loving life. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that cheese, boy. Look at that mustard. Alright. Shout out, Martin. <laughs> Pisa, cough some all. So which to prefer of your pants, the Kebs or the Vita Pros? Uh. Still recording. <sighs> broke it. Straight broke it. Straight broke it. That sucks, dude. Okay, guys, uh, broke my camera and microphone, so fantastic. Okay, well, that sucks. I legit broke my microphone. Uh, it's taped up now, so... Oh, my God, it just fell again. I don't know if you can see it. Look at this. This is my microphone dangling off. Anyways, uh, I'll get back with you if I have... <laughs> Get back with you if I have something to film. I'm just beside myself about breaking this $300 microphone. Fantastic. You saw what happened to my, my camera there, Michael. Yes, I did. I don't, it was just talking to it, and it fell completely right off my tripod. Yeah, it just came right out of the mount. Right out of the mount. As if like somebody hadn't screwed it on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have it off. Maybe I did. No, it was all me. 100% it was all me. <laughs> Well, so to answer Mike's question, with my broken microphone, I prefer my Vita Pro trousers for a couple of reasons. They're the first ones I got. I really like the color scheme, and they have an axe pocket. But if I'm being practical, the Kebs, because they have the nylon, and they have the ventilation. If I were to get one pair, knowing what I know now, it would be the Kebs. 
but they're not as cool as the Vita Pros. And that's what matters, right? All right, guys, we're headed to bed. Good night, creepy Mike's face. Hi, <laughs> right, guys. You had a good night's sleep. It was a little bit colder last night. Had to bundle up a little bit more. But we got to get out of here. We have a long hike and a big drive to get home. So we're just trying to pack up now and get out before the storm comes. We got all this new snow on the ground. Probably got a couple centimeters of snow overnight. So thanks, Mike, for coming. It was lots of fun. Thanks, Joe, for having me. And we will see you guys on the next one.